Welcome back, y'all. So, the other day, I was actually working on our Jeep Cherokee, changing out the tires and cleaning it out. Um, so I had moved the Fox body out of the garage, out of the shop, to pull the Jeep in. Upon fit, being getting done with the Jeep, I was like, okay, I'm gonna put the Fox body back in the shop. Went to start it up, and it was just, no, 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 no. Nothing, right? Uh, crank real fast, but no, no fire. Uh, generally, with Fox bodies, you get, you know, it could either. I mean, with any engine, it could be. It's usually fuel or air or fuel or spark because generally you're not going to have enough of an obstruction in your air flow to cause a car to not run at all. Um, with Fox bodies, it can either be fuel or spark. Typically, with if it's a spark on a Fox body, you know, you may have a bad coil, bad coil wire, bad TFI, a uh, number of things these older distributor cars could have issues with. Um, generally, if it's one spark plug wire, you wouldn't, the car would run, but have a miss, obviously, but, you know, I, if I was going to think spark, I would think it would be a coil or a coil wire or the TFI. But, um, rather than diagnosing that, I decided to, since I have a fuel pressure gauge I can run, plug in, I plugged it into the Schrader valve, and I'm going to do it again here for y'all, but the Schrader valve is right here between the mass air meter and the head. It's right there. Um, it's kind of right there so you unscrew that plastic cap and you can thread on a, a gauge <sighs> pretty simple anyway decided to do that real quick lo and behold it's only getting about 10 psi fuel pressure which should have anywhere from 37 to 42 somewhere in there because it has a stock fuel pressure gauge or uh, regulator i was like well on top of that if you have someone turn the key on and you sit back by the fuel tank you can hear the pump engage for a few seconds you can really hear it on this car because i put that 340 pump in it's a little bit louder than stock that wasn't an issue so you know it roll boiled down to one of two things either the line that goes from the pump to the top of the fuel tank uh came off or something or fuel pressure regulator is bad so, real quick, I'm going to hook this gauge back up and show you how you can kind of tell real quick if it's the fuel pressure regulator or if it's something like more drastic, like having to drop a tank to fix the fuel pump. So, stand by one second. Okay, so all I've done down below is so taking a pair of vice grips, clamp the rubber section of the return line, and... Now I'm gonna turn the key on, let it prime, or try to prime, and see how much fuel pressure we get. Okay. Bingo, got 30, which before it was basically like five. So, it tells me it needs a new fuel pressure regulator which I already have. You take the key out. <clears throat> so, I've also been disconnecting my battery because there's, there's an alarm system in this car and it's draining the power. Um, but, as you can see, with the line clipped, it's still holding. I'm not, I didn't even clip it that tight, but I bet as soon as I undo this, eh, it's actually holding now, but it wasn't the other day or yesterday. So what I'm going to do, I already actually went and bought it yesterday. Uh, because this car, it's on stock injectors. It's 
really doesn't have a high fuel demand or anything like that. No reason for an adjustable one uh, just yet. I just went ahead and got a replacement at AutoZone. It's 20 bucks. Um, this is what they look like in the stock form. Stock form, they're easy. Plus, it's easier to replace because, as you can see, it has three mounting holes. Uh, if you get an aftermarket one, which I've had in the past, you actually like have to take the fuel rail off to get to them. But there's a uh, three. It's really hard to show. Like, basically, there's three bolts underneath. It's kind of a pain in the ass to get to. And honestly, uh, if you got to do it, you might as well yank the throttle body and all that stuff off. So, what I may end up doing is holding off on this. Just wanted to show a quick way to di diagnose that. Check your fuel pressure. Because um, that could be the cause of your problems real quick. Uh, it's good to have one of these little gauges. Um, you never know when you need it. I've used this on multiple cars over the years. It's definitely got its made its paid itself off. But it's just three bolts. They're like Allen head bolts underneath. It's kind of a pain to see. You can barely see one of them right there. There's another one right there. You almost want to just take all this crap off and do it with the throttle body out of the way. So I may actually wait until I get around to doing the aftermarket throttle body that I have to fix all that. So uh, this will be pending a update. But anyway, until next time, I'll be back. Welcome back, y'all. So in this segment, I'm going to be replacing the fuel pressure regulator on the Fox body. I highly recommend you watch my previous video on moving the throttle body first because it just makes so much more room for you uh, a lot of people uh, preferred method is to do it right uh, to remove the upper plenum on the intake to get it out the way so you can lift you know disconnect the fuel rail and lift it up but what I've done not the right way but just pried up a little bit on this on the uh, fuel rail to give it a different angle because all you really need to get the fuel pressure regulator itself off is a four millimeter allen wrench there's three underneath and you can get to them the these two the front two pretty easy but this one is too close to the heater core pipe but if you bend the, the fuel line just a smidge just tweak it you can get an allen wrench on it and start turning it so <clears throat> all i gotta do now is loosen all three disconnect the vacuum line and put the new one on so stay tuned okay so the old one's out you can see right here the three bolts holes right there one two three that one ended up being the hardest one to get to um it's gonna be fun trying to get it back in if you don't feel confident in this you can always like i said just take the uh, intake off there's several extra steps but it gives you more room to move um it is kind of frustrating doing it that way but if you don't have don't want to buy a new gasket for the intake plenum you know th there's some reasons why you might want to do it this way but all that being said, let me get the car, get this one back in the car, and we'll move on. All right, as you can see, the new fuel pressure regulator is in, vacuum lines connected. It's not a complicated process, it's just tedious because you're using an Allen wrench and it's upside down. I don't know who designed that that way, but they should have been taken out and shot. <laughs> I don't know why it couldn't have been that the Allen wrench heads were going down and the fuel rail portion was the threaded side but instead they made the fuel pressure regulators threaded don't know why but it's done at this point you would uh, 
put your throttle body and what back whatnot back on if you decided to take your intake manifold off to give you more room and do all that uh you would have to bolt all that back up but anyway another one down uh if you like stuff like this make sure to like like share and subscribe and until next time i'll be back